Hi guys, I just wanted to make a quick video on Hurricane Ida and um, just something I see with every hurricane really, but uh, I guess this one it's really getting to me because my best friend is in a mobile home stuck down there and very terrified right now, has young children in the house and everything and literally could not afford to evacuate. And you know, I can't speak for the entire Gulf Coast, but as a Louisiana native, a South Louisiana native, I can speak for Louisiana. And the truth is that most people in South Louisiana grow up in extreme poverty. And a lot of them live in mobile homes. And um, the concept of why don't they just evacuate or they deserve it because they didn't evacuate. It's not that simple, okay? So first of all, you've got all of the cheap hotels are going to go first. All of the cheap hotels and the closest hotels that are, you know, out of the danger zone are going to go first. So if you don't book well in advance, what you're going to be doing is driving states away just for an expensive hotel. Okay, so this is basically like an emergency vacation. Combine that with the high cost of gas right now, even even gas price gouging and hotel price gouging, which still exists even though it's illegal, they still get away with it to an extent, okay? Um, yeah, it's, it's like an emergency vacation. And you are not just going for a day or two because you have road closures. Um, it, the aftermath, you're going to have gas shortages and the stores are going to be closed. They're going to be out of a lot of resources that you need to come back and survive. So you're going to be evacuating for maybe a week or more. That's not just the gas to get there, but that's a week of hotels that are not going to be, you know, uh, you can't just go on Priceline and find the cheapest hotel, basically. It's, it's a week of expenses that even the middle class, if you're not, if you don't have the right savings in place, even the middle class can struggle with evacuation finances and whatnot. So evacuating is not as simple, as easy, or as cheap as people seem to think that it is and for you know even if you have the money for it but it's a big expense and it's gonna make you struggle you know sometimes people have to weigh the odds of should I stay or should I go and a lot of people will choose to stay especially since most of the time when you have a hurricane it doesn't end up being that bad if you're not right along the coast but it could really strengthen at the last minute, like this one did. A couple days ago, it was supposed to be a Category 2, and now it's almost a Category 5. Even in, um, I saw a video of Dolphin Island, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Dolphin Island, uh, Alabama, which is only supposed to have like a foot or two of storm surge, there's cars completely underwater because the storm surge, like, went up at the last minute and they didn't predict it and by that time you have road closures and all the hotels are gone and you know some people have just taken the risk and well I'm gonna get the insurance money I guess because I can't get out this late and that's all the way in Alabama so um so yeah I my family lives uh down in Dulac and they're staying in Homa if you know anything about Louisiana um so they're a little bit further away from the coast, but a lot of my family is poor and they couldn't afford to get all the way up to south, I mean, north Louisiana or, or further to get away from it. So they're just staying with other family members that are at least a little bit further away. But, you know, power outages and stuff, it, it's going to be a hell zone there for the next couple weeks. And you're not going to be able to get gas and the stores are going to be out of a lot of essentials like water and canned goods. And, um... So yeah, if you stay, you, you've got a lot of issues with the aftermath. Um, and I just, I just don't think it's fair that people are so judgmental of, you know, like, like it's, the, it's, it's their fault. Okay. And you could say, well, they, they need to get themselves to a better place in life to be able to afford things like that. But if you know anything about the economy in South Louisiana, you know it's not that simple either. There's not a lot of opportunities to grow. And most people who are born there stay there their whole lives. I, I was lucky to be able to move to Denver 
and it's a lot more expensive to live here, but we make a lot more money out here too. The minimum wage is twice as much as Louisiana. So I was, I was lucky to be able to get out of the hurricane zone, but not everyone is. And, um, you know, a lot of people in South Louisiana don't even drive cars. They don't have proper transportation. So even if you have enough in savings, you don't have a car to evacuate. So there's many factors here, and um, I, I want to make a quick commentary on the whole, it's, uh, it's hurricanes are karma for slavery. That's interesting because minorities in the South are usually in more poverty than white people even. So that's, it's condescending even to say that because minorities end up suffering more in a storm than white people that tend, you know, on, on average to be a little bit better off. And a lot of that has to do with slavery because of um, how, how money is passed through generations and stuff and, and, and even racism in the South. Um, you know, uh, minorities being discriminated against for job opportunities and such. That That's still a thing that exists. So that, <sighs> it bothers me when people say that and no one... No one really comes to the defense of that because it sounds good, you know, like screw white people, but you're 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 just condescending minorities in poverty in the South when you're saying that actually. But um, you know, just just educate yourself on hurricanes and the evacuation process before you judge people and say that they deserve to die in their own homes for things that you don't understand, you know? Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that.